Right. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here today because there is a new WWE pay-per-view out on Saturday, hailing from the UK for the first time in 19 years. And I am here to predict the match card for that show for the third time this evening. The first time was interrupted by dinner. The second time was interrupted because my phone was doing something. And now the third time I'm here recording this video again. So I highly suspect that the people in that room, the people downstairs and the people outside that window are getting very tired of me talking about this show for three separate times in a row. So let's make this the third time lucky, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, I am here. The card is as follows. Subject to change, of course. Matt Riddle versus Seth Rollins. Bianca Belair. Alex Bliss. And Asuka. Sorry, I do have an Amazon Echo in my phone. So I'm not allowed to say that. In my phone, in my room. So saying that word is a bit dangerous. Asuka versus Bailey, Dakota Kai, and Eero Sky. And then Gunther versus Sheamus for the Intercontinental Championship. Liv Morgan versus Shayna Baszler for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And the main event of the evening, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre for the Undisputed Universal Heavyweight Championship of the World. So we're going to run through the card. I'm going to tell you what I think is going to happen. Uh, many of these things I thought a while back when the matches were announced or whatever and a lot of and some of it very few of it i thought on the spot before i recorded this video so yeah i'm just going to run down the matches who i think is going to win what i think is going to happen and maybe some you know some things that have been going on leading up to this to the match in question now, the first match on the card, according to the WWE website, is Matt Riddle versus Seth Rollins. Now, Seth Rollins hasn't been very successful in pay-per-view matches. And do I think that's going to change? No. Despite him being more, I feel, of a Triple H guy, of an NXT sort of guy, I think Matt Riddle is going to take the win here. Because, you know, he needs that sort of win on a big stage. Especially if they're going to push him as a you know, as a solo star after RK Bro has sort of run its course. And Randy Orton has sort of shifted into a part-time role and a backstage role. So, you know, that's going to happen sooner rather than later. So Riddle is going to definitely need those big match wins. So. I think he's going to take the victory here. But how he does it is going to be the most important part of this match, I feel. Because it is going to be a great match. Let's not let's not deny it. It's going it's Matt Riddle versus Seth Rollins. It can't be any it can't be any bad, can it? So what I think is going to happen is we are going to reestablish RK Bro as a team. So we're going to have Randy Orton, come on out, attack Seth Rollins after the match. We all think he's turning on Matt Riddle, but he isn't. He helps him get the win or, you know, saves him from a Seth Rollins attack down the line, which sets us up for a tag team match, maybe if Seth Rollins finds a, finds a partner. So that could be quite interesting and lead on that story until Cody Rhodes comes back or something like that. I don't know. But the next. So that's what I think is going to happen. Matt Riddle's going to win. Randy Orton's going to come out after the match. Is it fantasy booking? Maybe. Is it going to happen? Maybe. Who knows? Now the next match is the six woman tag team match. And I believe that the Triple H recruits Bailey. Dakota Kai and Eero Sky are going over the main eventers, let's say, because obviously they are the new recruits, they need the win, and yeah, 
that's basically what all of this is going towards. The fact that they need the win more than the other team. So, yeah, that's basically it. That's that's all I've got to say on that match. It's going to be entertaining as every single match on this card is going to be. But, you know, that's all I'm going to say on the matter. Is it going to be a clean victory? Most likely not. Because, you know, they're the heels. They're going to have to get the victory somehow. Now, speaking of heels, here's a match with two of them. <coughs> oh, I do apologise. Here's a match with two heels. Oh, my voice has gone very coarse. I'll be back in a second. Anyway. Here's a match with two of the heels. So <laughs> that was going to be a really good transition as well into the next match. But who cares? That's the that's the curse of not using editing. So <laughs> we have Gunther versus Sheamus for the Intercontinental Championship. The match of two heels. Who's going to go over in this matchup? I don't know. Quite honestly, who knows? Um... Sheamus, I feel I feel that this match, or this feud especially, along with the feud and matches he had with Drew McIntyre, is going to really establish him as that legend status, you know, that consistent um, competitor that he is. Because Sheamus is one of those guys that I feel a lot of the, you know, hardcore fans really you know, like and respect for, you know, delivering these consistent, hard-hitting rules of matches that he's been doing for the past 10, 10 years or the past decade or whatever you want to call it. But then the other fans go, yeah, meh. But, you know, so I think he's definitely going to be cemented as a the sort of legend and icon that he deserves to be after this match. Um... But is he going to win? That's the only question. I don't think so. I think Gunther is going to retain the title. Much to Sheamus's dismay. And probably much to the fans' dismay. Because I think Sheamus might be the bigger face in this match. Based on, you know, the location that it's happening. Based on the amount of, you know, home hometown esque promos that Sheamus has been cutting. He's been cutting a lot of promos talking about, you know, Cardiff and his relationship with the UK. So I feel that he's gonna have more of the um cheap pops, I guess you could say, having mentioned the place so much in his recent promos. And then so Gunther is gonna win that match and retain the title. In what I believe, spoiler alert, is going to be the only title defence of the evening. Which just adds to the legitimacy that Gunther is going to add to his title reign. Because I feel that's the only reason Gunther has been given this title reign. Is to cement him as a championship guy, really. So that you know he can hold on to this title, have a long reign. And then when he's ready, or when the title is ready on the right opponent, he can lose the, he can drop the title, go up to the main event, and win it. So, who knows? So I think Gunther's going to retain here tonight, and then you know, not here tonight, but you know what I mean, and then go on and face other people. So the next match is probably going to be the hardest match to predict. Maybe even harder than the main event. It's going to be Liv Morgan versus Shayna Baszler. Now this is going to be the hardest match to predict because we don't know where Triple H's head lies at the moment. Whether he wants to make that sort of mark on the division this quickly as it is his first pay-per-view in charge. Or whether he wants to sort of, you know, keep the status quo for now. And then, you know, maybe somewhere down the line start, you know, dropping titles left, right and centre and things like that. 
but I do believe that this is going to be his first step into giving the title to people that he wants to have the title. So I think that Shayna Baszler is going to be going over Liv Morgan in this match because, yeah, she's more of a Triple H person than Liv Morgan is, but also I feel that for Shayna Baszler to have any sort of credit or, you know, believability in the WWE main event of the women's division, you can't have her lose every opportunity she has since she has since returning, since coming to the main roster. She lost to Becky Lynch and then didn't get another opportunity until now, which means that if she loses, she's lost all her opportunities and probably doesn't deserve another one in the eyes of kayfabe. So, you know, maybe she should win, whether it's going to be a long reign or whether it's just going to be a reign to sort of go, yeah, she's here, she's going to be a star, but at the moment, you know, we're trying to sort of fix what happened after WrestleMania and after that loss to Becky Lynch. So I think this is definitely going to be the building blocks of Shayna's rejuvenation of her career. So she's either going to win or it's going to be some sort of interference or um, otherwise, you know, whether it's going to be by Ronda Rousey after being, you know, after returning from being suspended and arrested, or whether it's going to be by, you know, just choking Liv Morgan out with the rear naked choke. Who knows? Now we move on to the main event, the most anticipated match of the evening. And here is what I think is going to happen. No, well, not what I think is going to happen, what I think should happen. Now, this is the match I've been most excited to um, predict. I love predicting this match. And it changes so often. But I think that it's it's Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre, by the way. And what I think is going to happen is that Drew McIntyre is going to win the title in Cardiff, Wales, only a stone's throw away from his hometown, and come back with broken dreams. The crowd get a pop, with the return of broken dreams, of course, and then a pop when Drew McIntyre wins. But I think Triple H wants to send the home, the town home happy. Especially for his first, his first month, his first pay per view, as whatever he is, as head of talent or head of creative, whatever it is. So I think you know, Broken Dreams is going to be coming back. I think Drew McIntyre is going to win the title. Then at the end of the match, we're going to have another crowd popping experience, and that experience isn't focused on Drew McIntyre this time. This time it's focused on Roman Reigns. But not only on Roman Reigns, this experience is focused on who is a is attacking the head of the table and that man is the fiend. That man is Bray Wyatt. Now I did text my friend a few days before um before a lot of the match card was announced, saying, wouldn't it be cool if The Fiend came back attacking Roman Reigns? Because not only does Drew McIntyre have Karrion Cross to face at the next pay-per-view, but also that gives Roman Reigns something to do now that he's lost the title. But also, could you imagine that Firefly Funhouse match if he does go back to a sort of Fiend-like character? It's going to be the most interesting thing you have ever seen. You know, he's been the John Cena guy for such a long time now. And I think that Roman Reigns is the perfect next person to have as a Firefly Funhouse victim. So maybe we're going to get that. That would be really quite interesting. Or 
maybe we get it on the SmackDown afterwards. I would be happy with either. I would definitely prefer if he came back on the Saturday at Clash of the Castle and attacked Roman Reigns. That would be the best thing to happen to close off the show, I feel. To send the crowd home happy and satisfied that not only have we seen the ending of Roman Reigns' nearly two-year, probably over two-year title reign, that we've seen the return of Broken Dreams, that we've seen the crowning of Drew McIntyre in his home um, island, let's call it, that we've seen the return of The Fiend, and that we've seen a damn fine pay-per-view so that checks all the five boxes. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know in the comments below what you think about that, what your predictions are, uh, which match you're most excited to see, whether you're going to be there, whether you're not going to be there, or whatever. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, and do all that lovely stuff. But I will be back with another video very soon. So. This one, the next one, is going to be a very interesting video and one that you need to watch. Thanks, guys. I'll catch you there. Maybe.